today I'm gonna to show you how to get those sharp, Instagram-worthy photos of your tarantulas without spending a fortune, and we're starting right now. Welcome to the Tarantula Collective. My name is Richard, and if you enjoy species-specific care and husbandry videos, as well as all things tarantula-related, make sure you're subscribed and hit that notification bell to turn on all notifications so you're alerted every time I upload a new video in the future. Now, if you've been following this channel for a while, then you know I got my start actually on Instagram. Way before I even thought about making videos, I was taking pictures of my tarantulas and posting them on Instagram, essentially just to share my love of these species and to connect with other tarantula lovers out there. I'm like the only person in my town that I think actually keeps a lot of tarantulas. So finding people to talk about different species, it was pretty difficult. And I found that by making a tarantula account on Instagram and sharing my photos, I was able to connect with a lot of different people. As of right now, I have around 18,000 followers on Instagram. Up until recently, that was the largest social media following that I had. Now YouTube's completely blown it out of the water. And one question that I get asked a whole lot is how I get these pictures of my tarantulas. Now it's not totally fair because I'm using mirrorless cameras and fancy lenses and, and fancy lighting, but it's not necessary for you to do that to get some stunning photos of your teeth. So I'm gonna give you five quick tips that you can use right now to get much better photos of your tarantulas. A lot of these things you probably already own or can obtain them very cheaply. And I'll leave links to everything I mentioned down below in the description of this video so you can find them quickly. So the first tip I have for you today is to use a tripod. Now, a lot of people have a tripod just laying around in their garage, but if not, you can pick them up on Amazon for as little as five bucks. It really depends on what type of camera you're using. If you're just using your cell phone, it's fairly inexpensive. The larger or heavier camera is, the more expensive it will be. But you can get a decent tripod for as little as 10 or 15 bucks for the heaviest camera you can imagine. The main benefit to using a tripod is that it's gonna hold your camera steady. And when taking photos of tarantulas, you're usually zoomed in a lot or using a macro lens. So that just the smallest shakes of your hand moving can create some significant blur and a very dull or unsharp image. So use a tripod so your camera's steady and it's gonna produce a very crisp photo. Now this next tip is probably gonna require you to spend a little bit of money, but luckily it's not that expensive. I assume most people are taking photos of their tarantulas with their cell phones, and I highly suggest you invest in a macro lens. You can get these on Amazon for as cheap as like 10 bucks, all the way up to like $150. And if you're using an actual camera with interchangeable lenses, you can find a basic cheap manual focus macro lens for only like 30 to $50. Of course, you can spend upwards of four or five grand on a macro lens as well. Essentially what a macro lens does is it lets you zoom in on your object and get very close to get a lifelike, very sharp image. And the benefits of using a macro lens when taking a photo of your tarantula is you can get an image that appears to be very close while you're able to maintain a safe distance between the tarantula and your camera. a link down below in the description for some awesome macro lenses that I've used myself on my cell phone, as well as some interchangeable lenses if you're using a DSLR or a mirrorless camera. But the clarity, the sharpness, and just the, the overall picture itself that you'll get using a macro lens will really kick your game up to the next level. 
Now, whether you're just zooming in or you're using a macro lens, this next tip is very important, and that is to use plenty of light. Now, I'm not gonna get into the entire science of photography, but just know that the conditions that are present when taking photos of tarantulas usually means you're getting very little light onto the sensor of the camera. Whether you're zooming in, using a macro lens, or just moving the phone as close to the tarantula as you can. When you do that, your camera will usually compensate for the low light by boosting what's called ISO. The drawback is that introduces a lot of grain into the photo. It just doesn't look as dark and deep and uh, as much contrast as you normally would have. This is very important when using a macro lens because there's very little light actually making its way through the lens into the camera. Now, some of the macro lenses you can clip onto your cell phone camera actually have a little LED light attached. But if not, you can either use a flash, but what I suggest is getting an LED light or a flashlight or a lamp or pretty much anything that you can safely move as close to the tarantula as possible so that you get a crisp, in focus, just very sharp image. You can always edit the photo later and bring down the highlights or boost up the contrast a little bit to get more of a balanced image. Just make sure you're not using too much light and completely blowing out the image so that all the whites are completely washed out. So once you take a photo, just go and review that and see if you need more light or less light. Now this fourth tip may seem obvious, but just scrolling through pictures of tarantulas on Instagram, you can see it's something a lot of people struggle with. And that's getting a clear view of your tarantula. Trying to shoot through a dirty glass enclosure or one that's covered in webs will really inhibit your ability to get a great picture of your tarantula. So what I suggest is before you even decide you're gonna take pictures, get a wet paper towel and clean the inside of the enclosure. So you have a nice clear window to your species. Another option is to take the lid off the enclosure and shoot down onto the tarantula. Or if the tarantula is particularly docile, maybe you even remove it from the enclosure and set it on a low table or on the floor so you can get an unobstructed photo. The worst thing you can do is try to get a picture through cloudy plastic or dirty glass or even shoot through a web. It just isn't gonna work very well. If you want a high quality photo of your specimen, you really need to make sure you've got an unobstructed clear view of the T. Now this last tip I think will help out a lot of people. We all know that tarantulas have a mind of their own. They don't make the best models when it comes to photography. If you want them to move, they're just gonna stand still. And if you want them to stand still, inevitably they're gonna be walking around. And it always seems that they'll be still until you start to snap the photo and then they'll move, causing everything to look blurred and weird. So for tip number five, what I suggest is that you use multi-burst. Most cell phone cameras have this option, as do almost all of your mirrorless and DSLR cameras. Essentially what multi-burst is, is you just hit the shutter once and it just starts rapid succession taking many photos back to back. Now you may end up with 10 or 20 or even 100 photos, but when you scroll through them, chances are you're gonna get a nice clear photo of that tarantula, even if it's moving around. This also is handy when you're using a macro lens because the smallest movement of either the tarantula or of your camera can cause a blurred image. When you use multi-burst and it takes dozens of photos, even if your hand's moving a little bit, inevitably you'll end up with at least one clear photo. Photo, hopefully. Another option is to use a remote shutter button. Those are fairly inexpensive and you can buy them for almost any normal camera, but you can also get Bluetooth versions that will connect to your phone. So if you have your phone or camera on a tripod, you don't have to worry about hitting the shutter button and making the camera jitter a little bit. You can just use the little remote trigger, whether it's Bluetooth connected or with a wire, and get nice, crisp, clear photos of your tea. Well, hopefully you found this video helpful, and if you did, make sure you hit that like button. And if you get some awesome photos of your tarantulas that you post on Instagram, be sure to tag me, because I'd like to see them, especially if you use some of the tips in this video. If you have any other questions or even some tips on tarantula photography, make sure you drop those down below in the comments and we can get a conversation going. If you want to see some of the Instagram photos of my tarantulas, check out this playlist right here. And if you want to check out my second channel, The Exotic Pet Collective, check out these videos right here. Well, I appreciate 
appreciate you watching. Subscribe if you want to see more content. Thanks for buying Tarantula Collective merchandise, and I will see you next Tuesday. Ha, 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 ha.